You see, in, in the history of philosophy and poetry and art, we always find the interchange of two personality types, which I call prickles and goo. <laughs> the prickly people are advocates of intellectual porcupinism. They want a rigor. They want precise statistics. And they have a sudden clipped attitude in their voices. And you know this very well in academic circles, where there are people who are always edgy like that. And they accuse other people of being disgustingly vague and miasmic and mystical. But the vague, miasmic and mystical people accuse the prickly people of being mere skeletons with no flesh on their bones. And they say to you, you just rattle. You're not really a human being. You know the words, but you don't know the music. And so therefore, if you belong to the prickly type, you hope that the ultimate constituent of matter is particles. If you belong to the gooey type, you hope it's waves. If you are prickly, you're a classicist. And if you're gooey, you're a romanticist. And going back into medieval philosophy, if you're prickly, you're a nominalist. If you're gooey, you're a realist. But we know very well that this natural universe is neither prickles nor goo exclusively. It's gooey prickles and prickly goo. And uh, you see... <laughs> It all depends on your level of magnification. If you've got your magnification on something so that the focus is clear, you've got a prickly point of view. You've got structure, shape, clearly outlined, sharply defined. You look out of focus, it's going to go and you've got goo. But we're always playing with the two.